He's telling you not to be unwise. He's telling you to understand what the will of the Lord is. I wish it was just in black and white somewhere where I could just read and say, oh, this is the will of God. Oh, wait a minute, there is. Glory be to God. The Bible is God's written will, God's written word. If you want to know his will, you want to know what he said, well, you got to read the book. You know, it's, uh, it's not that difficult. If you go there first, maybe you won't run into so many problems. Talking about God's will for people, would that be good to know? Wouldn't you like to know what God's will is for you? We're all going to find out tonight. A lot of people go throughout their whole life, even believers, even Christians, right? They'll go throughout their whole life and never really care whether they're fulfilling God's will for them or even ask Him. Can you believe that? That seems like a strange thought to me because it was just something I really wanted in my life from the get-go, from the beginning. I wasn't looking to die and go to heaven. I was looking to fulfill what God wanted me to do in the earth. Yes. Are you here? Yes. So if you can get beyond that hurdle that I want to know what God's will is for me, then that's where we're going today. Yes. Isn't that nice? Yes. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 17 wherefore be ye not unwise but understand what the will of the Lord is so if people don't understand what the word of the Lord is or the will of the Lord is what would you call them according to the verse they're unwise you don't want to be unwise he's telling you not to be unwise he's telling you to understand what the will of the Lord is I wish it was just in black and white somewhere where I could just read and say oh this is the will of God Oh, wait a minute there is it's right there verse 17 but understanding what the will of the Lord is so it's going to take a little understanding verse 18 be not drunk with wine you know and lots of times we'll see things in the Bible looks like that's just a phrase out of context and a lot of it has to do because of the way the, the way they spoke in the Greek and the way they phrase things it was a, this was there to say you don't th this is very like the thing I'm gonna be talking about mm -hmm. it's a descriptive phrase it's describing what's coming up be not drunk with wine where it is excess but be filled with the Spirit say be filled with the Spirit, filled with the Spirit. what is the will of the Lord for you to be filled with the Spirit and this word here and I've spoken about this many times is the active sense of be it means to be being filled it doesn't mean oh I got filled in the 60s and spoke in other tongues and que sera, and now I just do whatever the will of God is to be being filled in the active sense say the active sense the, active sense. the continual active sense of being being filled that's God's will for you now this is a twofold application it's not only God's will for you to be being filled actively every day but it is also where you will find God's will for you is when you are full his will becomes plain his will is revealed are you seeing this don't be you know don't be unwise but know what the will of the Lord is be being filled you'll know what the will of the Lord is when you're full are you getting this when do I know when the will of what the will of the Lord is when I'm full you know what if I'm half full then first of all you didn't fulfill the first part of it you got to be full mm -hmm. and once you're full then you'll know what the will of the Lord are you here so be full is the will and it is also the plan be filled with the Spirit and who would that be the Holy, Ghost. the Holy Ghost can you imagine that knowing the will of God when you're full with God that is his will filled with the Holy Ghost what verse 19 speaking how are you filled how did you receive the Holy Ghost you began to speak with other tongues it's the it's the initial evidence of being filled and then you continue to speak and you're continually filled daily by speaking speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing and making melody 
in your heart to the Lord Lord who the Holy Ghost and who are you making melody with not harmony melody is singing the same thing so we're gonna be speaking the same thing that the Holy Ghost is saying and that's how we're filled are you here yes. is speaking in tongues saying the same thing that the Holy Ghost is saying yeah. yeah if you do it right and if you do it well and you get better at it you can get more accurate in your enunciation of spiritual things right you're speaking them but you can also say we also have the known Word of God which was given through prophecy holy men of old spake are you here spake as they were moved by the will of the Holy Ghost so we know those things if we say those things we're speaking in agreement with God's Word Psalms hymns spiritual songs speaking in agreement with God I'm being full speaking with agree in agreement with God I'm being filled is that God's will yes saying the same thing know what the will of the Lord is be not drunk with wine wherein is excess but be filled with the Spirit you could almost say in excess See, he said don't be drunk with wine in excess but be filled with the Spirit in excess what does in excess mean full, full and then more than enough yes. say full, full. Then, more than enough. then more than enough and when you're full and it comes out then it gets on you you understand yes. just like if you're pumping gas and you keep pumping it and it didn't have one of those little triggers that shut it off mm -hmm. what would happen it would once it got full it would come out and get on you when you get full of the healing verses of Scripture what happens it comes out and gets on you what if I get full of the prosperity verses of Scripture <clears throat> it comes out and it gets on what gets on you the prosperity that's in those verses are you here yes. we're gonna be not drunk with wine but in excess but be filled with the Spirit speaking how do we get full speaking in agreement with God how do we speak in agreement with God we already know I've quoted that second Peter 121 you don't have to turn there but it says holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost what did they speak when they were moved by the Holy Ghost what do we have here his words and they became scriptures the holy men or the prophets spake and those things became scriptures so the scriptures are what the Holy Ghost spake Do you understand that so if I speak them what happens I'm speaking his word I'm speaking in agreement with the Spirit I can be filled speaking in agreement is this making sense this is God's method speaking in agreement with him God's will for you is to be full and God's will comes out of you being full if you're full of God's will which is God's Word and it comes out of you what's gonna get on you his word and his will you got some of his will on you you dribbled some on you you know it just came out and now it's on you say it's on me it's on the, will of God the will of God is on me, on me. how did it get on you by speaking and you got you spoke enough to where you got full and it came out are you here yay glory be to God forever first Corinthians chapter 4 and then let's quickly look at verse 8 now you are full now you are rich when are you rich when you're full, when you're full. are you getting this yes when are you rich when you're full, when you're full when are you rich with God's plan when you're, full. when you're full and you're full to overflowing it's when you're full that you hear it's when you're full that things come out of the Spirit and get you it's when you're full see because he said don't be unwise know what the will of the Lord is being filled when are you gonna know the will of the Lord when you're full when do you hear from God when you're full well I haven't heard then what's the problem you're not full we should frankly be in a continual state and I'm gonna talk about this a little bit a continual state of be being filled and be, which means you should be full all the time mm -hmm. ready at any moment to overflow either on yourself or someone else are you getting this yes. full is God's plan and his plan is in the fullness there's only one way for you and me 
to be in the plan of God and to be in the will of God and that is what being full I don't care if you're a preacher I don't care if you're a lay person I don't care if you're a truck driver I don't care what you are God's will for you is to be full and you'll never know the will of God actively knowing it <coughs> until you're full and it comes out right. right the only way for you and me is being full the gifts the calls the plans are all activated through this fullness there's a scripture that says out of his fullness we have all received it's out of his overflow out of his fullness are you here mm -hmm. what's God's plan for you to be full number one and then you'll know the plan after you're full the gifts are activated through fullness ministry is in the overflow so our job is to be full and to overflow did you get that well I wish I knew well that's what we're gonna be talking about how do I get full how do I overflow because we need to be we need to be always full and ready to overflow see the problem is most people aren't most people get in a situation and now God's got to get them full mm -hmm. they're not ready to just overflow God's always trying to get them full when their job mm -hmm. is to be being filled are you here mm -hmm. see most people want the preacher to do it all for them you know 20 minutes on Sunday morning fill me up and then, you know are they gonna get full on 20 minutes Sunday morning no they're gonna get partially filled maybe a little cup full and they're not gonna know until they're full and whose job is it to fill them up the preacher no their job is to be being filled so that any given moment they overflow frankly the preacher should be able to come in just pour a little bit on them and they spill over okay. isn't that nice so what's it take to get you there to fullness well we see here it says in speaking what's the number one thing you're gonna have to learn how to do if you want to be full and stay full all the time be filled speaking speaking to yourselves yeah. sounds a little crazy doesn't it mm -hmm. but it's not speaking to yourselves in these spiritual things now I've gone on at length time and time again about speaking in tongues have I ever preached on speaking in tongues yeah. and I've said you know you should spend at least an hour a day speaking in tongues right what does it take to get you there how much time do I spend on trying to get people so that they're full so that they can just overflow and they can have the manifestation that they really really want but they got to be full first our speaking in tongues daily confessions and you know what that means it means having a list of scriptures that are the known will of God that you put in your mouth and you say them out your mouth I'm filled speaking are you here yes. I'm filled speaking the known will of God and I'm filled speaking the unknown will of God in other tongues how am I filled what's how am I gonna do it by speaking and how about using the words I worship you Holy Ghost are those words yes. speaking I worship you Holy Ghost speaking the scriptures speaking in other tongues. what if it takes more than an hour then you are going to have to speak until you're full say speak, speak. Until, until I'm full. full and then you'll overflow are you here yes. with the goodness of God and God's will will be done number one it's your, your will, his will for you to be filled and then you'll know the will when you've overflown Proverbs chapter 12 verse 6 and the second part of it but the mouth of the upright shall deliver them what would be in the mouth of someone who's upright the words of God speaking are you here I want deliverance I want prosperity I want healing then you got to have those things in your mouth they will deliver you when do they deliver you when you're full they overflow and the deliverance happens they overflow and the deliverance happens they the words overflow and the they get on you and the deliverance happens are you here mm -hmm. 
well we know God's will is deliverance right God's will is deliverance God's will is healing God's will is prosperity the mouth of the upright shall deliver them why because you're filled with the Spirit speaking Philippians 1 19 for I know that this shall turn now here he was specifically talking about a situation where he was in jail is that pretty bad yeah but you could be in the jail of something else you could be in the jail of sickness you could be in the jail of poverty you could be you, are you here you could be in some kind of jail for I know that this shall turn to my salvation and the word there is also uh, it's specifically soterian I means soteria it means deliverance healing prosperity it's that all-inclusive word salvation right I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ well prayer happens to be speaking words so it will turn listen your situation will turn through your speaking declaring saying the same thing God said calling things that be not and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ that word the supply of the Spirit it literally means full supply of the Spirit we're supposed to be full and so it shall turn to your salvation through your saying and the full supply of the Spirit are you seeing this yes. when does it turn to your salvation when you have the full supply the full supply of the Spirit now earlier this week and I wrote it down so I wouldn't forget it oftentimes I'll be doing something and I'll have to quickly go grab a pen he says this to me the Holy Ghost said this that the Holy Ghost favors say the Holy Ghost favors the Holy Ghost now favor means to look upon right favor means to give grace to the Holy Ghost favors those who speak with other tongues and when I say speak with other tongues I mean a lot I don't mean I spoke with other tongues once and I got filled right because a lot of people there's a lot of churches a lot of people who think that I was filled with the Holy Ghost and they spoke with tongues they had the evidence of receiving are you here mm -hmm. I don't have anything wrong with that there's nothing wrong with that you've got to receive the Holy Ghost but he favors those who speak actively say actively actively, actively speak he actively favors those who actively speak yes. why would that be because you're being filled and he's able to overflow into your situation so anyway I am pointing the way to being filled are you seeing this mm -hmm. if I do my confessions and I pray in other tongues and I worship the Holy Ghost I'm well on my way to being filled and there will be road markers along the way where I can tell whether I'm being filled or not and I'm gonna talk about those a little bit are you all right with this mm -hmm. You should be all right with this as long as you're willing to pray in tongues every day and to do your confessions every day and to worship the Holy Ghost every day mm -hmm. if you're not you're gonna be a long ways back from being filled I'm a preacher and I'm telling you this is how you do it are you here mm -hmm. I'm pointing the way tongue speaking in tongues a lot say a lot, a lot. confession saying the same thing that God said a lot worshiping the Holy Ghost why do I say a lot because you're not filled yet okay if you were filled you'd already know it and I'm gonna start to talk about the signs on the road to being filled but I get filled by doing these things if I don't do those things I can't be I'm not even on the road to being filled are you here yes. because I can speak my way into the fullness of God I can speak my way into the perfect will of God sounds sacrilegious to some people but I hope I've given you enough already to show you that way what is the perfect will of God what is the will of God to be filled to be being filled speaking so when I say I can speak myself 
into the will of God I can speak myself into the perfect will of God is this true yes. that I proved the point yet so how do we know whether we're getting full or not well number one you can have faith in the process I've said this before have faith in the process that if I'm sowing to the spirit I'm gonna of the spirit reap right mm -hmm. if I'm sowing into something I am going to get full eventually yes. how long does it take to fill up a bucket depends on how much I'm putting in the bucket isn't it if I go and I get a thimble you probably have a thimble people even know what thimbles are anymore right you sew with them so you don't stab your finger we don't see those a lot anymore well if I have a bucket let's say that bucket there and I'm gonna go and I want to fill up that bucket and each time I have to go to the bathroom at the end of the house and get a thimble and I bring it back how long is it gonna take me long a long time you'd be like hey why don't you take the bucket with you <laughs> right but it depends but would it get full would it get yes it would but if I use something a little more powerful and I put a little more effort into it I could probably find a hose somewhere if I wanted to and it wouldn't take nearly as long mm -hmm. you can be filled God didn't put this in his Bible so that to, just to just to ha 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 make fun of you that you can't be filled and know the will of God the will of God is for you to be full he's he's sent preachers like me to tell you how to get full right you have to do it though I can't make you speak in tongues I can't make you do your confessions I can't make you worship the Holy Ghost all I can do is point the way and I'm gonna tell you some of the road markers at least for me that I find along the way to encourage me that I know I'm getting there there must be things when you're like driving up north to go to your mother's house there must be road markers along the way where you turn to one thing and you go oh well there's that red barn we're halfway there oh here's this turn off we're almost there there's only four hours left <laughs> right what if you decided not to go all the way would you reap the benefit of being full we well, wouldn't reap the benefit of being there <laughs> eh, I didn't feel like putting that much effort I didn't want to go full I didn't want to go full there I just want to go partially there it's the thought that counts <laughs> it's not the thought that counts. so how do we know there's certain road marks and there's certain effects that the Holy Ghost listen the Holy Ghost will have upon your being upon your flesh upon your mind and particularly upon your face when you're full say when I'm full, when I'm full. now I'm talking now to people who are committed to being full of it brother you're full of it thank you remember in Ephesians 5 18 he said be not what drunk with wine where in his excess well so what what would somebody who's drunk with wine what would some of the things in excess someone who drank too much wine what would happen to them they would start slurring their speech mm -hmm. they probably start bumping into things right they might even fall down mm -hmm. but that's not where it started so if you were if you were filled with the Holy Ghost to that degree you'd would certainly be full at that point that's what happened on the day of Pentecost they spilled out into the street and they kind of looked like they were drunk are you here yes. but that's not how it started they started by and you, you know even the person who drinks uh, wine isn't gonna just take a sip and be st stumbling all over the place hey don't get mad at me I'm not the one who used that illustration and I'm not the one who said that they looked like drunk people when they came on the day of Pentecost all right the Holy Ghost used that illustration and I'll, I'll show you why in a little bit here so before they got really full or before they got to excess they maybe they were maybe just a little bit happy they were maybe a little bit they didn't have any as many inhibitions anymore they got up and sang karaoke that they never would do are you here it just kind of took the edge off and made them a little bit happy so one of the first indications are you here yes. of you be being filled when you start to get Full, when it's starting to get up to the rim where you're almost there and you need to keep going right mm -hmm. you're, you're going past the red barn on the side of the road where you know you're you're really close one of the things is the general sort of happiness that comes over you I would just call it a general buzz a general happiness a general sort of I'm good you ever heard that I'm good I'm good what's going on well I'm good 
it's just kind of a general sort of thing a blanket comes over you I'm just sort of I'm just good nothing seems the things that used to bother me I mean, it's okay a, th a spilled thing of milk eh. normally I'd be ah milk but you know I'm kind of good because I'm just I'm I, it's a, I'm just telling you okay it's a road marker along the way of being full you have a general sort of generalized I'm good a happiness it's sort of a, a happy sort of buzz you can say starting to get full I'm starting to feel it up here I'm just talking about it because I, it's okay it's all right things are going well even though in the natural all hell is broken loose are you here but because I'm full eh, hell breaking loose it's just hell it's just broken loose I'm okay I'm good are you here you see what's going on a general sort of not bothered by things I'm good a general a general feeling of goodness I'm good remember goodness because it's a general feeling that comes on you of goodness signs along the way we're almost full we're going there what should I do if I'm there stop no, keep going. oh I'm good I don't want to go no that should encourage me to keep going to fullness a lightening of your countenance meaning your countenance before you started getting full was a little bit under just not as not as happy not as good you understand but the lightning the lightening of my countenance the brightness of your face your outlook brightens your hope comes up before I didn't have much hope but now all of a sudden I have some hope I got some well think about what's going on here I'm feeding on the scriptures I'm confessing the word I'm speaking in other tongues and he says that I'm building myself up on my most holy faith what's gonna happen to me as I'm getting full as I'm getting fuller my countenance my outlook mm -hmm. brightens for what reason none in the natural nothing seemed like that happen why you should not be happy why are you so happy because my count I'm getting full and my count is this making sense yeah. I think it is you have a renewed hope and you begin to expect victory again for no other reason that you but that you're being filled with the Holy Ghost you're being filled with the word and it's about ready to overflow so don't stop keep going now Kenneth E Hagen uh, my spiritual dad he said when you're praying in the spirit and you're praying about something he says don't stop until you have a note of victory that would be another one another sign on the road a note of victory I'm praying I'm praying I'm praying and all of a sudden a note of victory comes to me and oftentimes he'll say there's a laugh that comes out and many times I'll be praying in other tongues praying in other tongues and I'll start going ha 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 what is that to me that means I know that I'm almost there mm -hmm. are you getting it yeah. a note of victory is a marker on the way to fullness a laugh in the spirit a bubbling up of joy again it didn't come out of here it came out of here why is it coming out of here cuz I'm getting full when I'm getting full one of the things one of the markers is a bubbling up of joy now let's look at a verse of scripture a note of joy something that comes out of the inside you there Philippians chapter 4 let's look at verse 7 and the peace of God which passes your understanding you ever pass someone on the road it surpassed your understanding so you've got you've got this note of victory you've got this joy bubbling up you've got this peace that comes on you that what goes past your understanding you don't know why mm -hmm. I don't know why I have this peace I'm telling you, road markers that tell you that you're being filled and you're almost full don't stop the peace is there the joy is there it, the joy goes beyond your understanding I'm laughing I don't know why I'm laughing I should be crying but I'm laughing mm -hmm. I don't know why I have peace I should be freaked out but I'm not because I'm getting full you still here mm -hmm. how do I know when I'm getting full I'm telling you how am I getting full you're speaking I'm speaking I'm speaking in other tongues I'm doing my confessions I can't tell you how many oh, it's almost every time 
when I do my confessions in the morning halfway through the list my face starts to smile for no reason other than that joy is coming up and getting in my face are you here say getting in my face, getting in my face. and who's that getting in your face the Holy Ghost I'm getting full in my face right and he bubbles up there's joy I shouldn't be joyous but I am it surpasses my understand are you here yes. first Peter chapter 1 verse 8 whom having not seen you love in whom though now you see him not yet believing you rejoice with joy unspeakable now I've preached whole messages on this what is joy unspeakable if you're so full of joy that you can't say anything what does that come up as comes up as a laugh it comes up as a joyful thing ha ha right with joy unspeakable and what's the next verse oh. <laughs> huh wait a minute up till here I thought you were making this up no joy unspeakable and full full of glory and we go from glory to glory and you're not going to get to the next level of glory till you're full of this one you're full of glory and there's joy unspeakable what's a road marker along the road to being full of glory joy unspeakable yeah meaning the other way you could go is i just don't know how to describe why i'm full of joy are you here joy unspeakable and full of glory it's a road mark along the way you look different you have a glow because you're getting full I'm telling you from experience I'm trying to show you from the word did you see that full of glory joy unspeakable they go together it's a road marker along the way well as I'm doing my confessions or speaking in other tongues I'm telling you my face will light up now I'm not looking at myself because I'm not looking in a mirror but I know that my countenance changes because I'll get up in the morning mm, um, you know I'm not one of those one of those people that jump up out of bed and whistle all right I'm all right with that if people do that I'm just telling you from my experience I don't usually whistle when I get up I kind of funk out of the bed and go get a glass of water or go to the bathroom or whatever you know you understand this is just me but then when I get to the word and I get to speaking in other tongues and usually I'll worship the Holy Ghost before I even get out of bed but I'll get up and I'm starting to get full I'm starting to feed I'm starting to how do you get full of anything you got to eat it you got to feed it in and according to the Bible we got to speak so about halfway through my list of confessions or speaking in tongues for an hour something happens something comes up out of me comes up into my face and I start to smile I get this silly grin on my face my countenance changes my countenance lights up say lights up. lights up what's lighting it up not me the Holy Ghost the word coming out are you getting this my face and lips start to get a little bit numb again for me I'm not saying this is going to happen to everybody I'm telling you, your face will lighten up if you confess the word it will happen that is standard standard protocol for being filled but one of the things I know is my face my my now my face is lightened up and I start to by the end of the scriptures I'm confessing I start to have I start to babble a little bit over it because my lips are getting numb and my face is a little bit numb I'm talking about road marks along the way Norval Hayes used to say when the anointing would come on him he would get in his hands and he'd say oh, the anointings in my hands and it's in my arms and he said it would feel like little men with brushes little brooms little men with brooms brushing my bones they'd be brushing my bones that's normal hey I can tell you I've had the same experience happen it feels that way right now as I'm preaching and many times I don't know if you've known or not but sometimes I'll start to my speech will get slurred sounds like I've been drinking some I'm not drinking anything I didn't go behind here with a flask <laughs> it's that the Holy Ghost as I'm yielding to him I get filled and part of my job is to be full so that when he comes on me I can overflow on you so 
we're changed from glory to glory we go here these are dif different road road markers along the way to knowing that I'm being filled right yeah. now you understand the process but you can start to understand yourself in these things we go from one level of glory to the next we need to be fully acclimated to the glory we're on and then we move over into the next one it takes time it takes effort so we're changed from glory to glory to what end to be being filled to being acclimated to the next level of glory that's the end another level of glory so fully acclimated you go there over and over again how does a drunk become a drunk again I'm using illustrations that the Bible did right the drunk person how did he get drunk how did he become a drunk how did he get to the point where he could handle more and more and more it's because he went there and he got acclimated to, to doing that over and over again mm -hmm. right and I'm talking about in the spirit as an illustration you had a little too much and then you, you went back and you did it again I went too far in my confessions not that you can but you go too far I got too far in there I prayed in tongues enough where I got to the place where I felt it in my face ah, I know what this means and you go there again be inebriated intoxicated with the spirit that's literally what he was saying there so pickle yourself in the spirit how does someone get pickled how does a pickle get pickled it gets in the spirit and it stays there until it well it looks like that it tastes like that are you here you stay in it you stay in it you stay in it say you stay in it, stay in it. that's how you're filled you're filled speaking and you continue to speak and speak and speak and speak and speak until you've you've gone too far too much pickle thyself I could even call that this the message pickle thyself pickle thine very own well, how are you gonna do it you saturate yourself with the spirit by speaking to what end to be fully acclimated to that level of glory and then go there again and go there again are you seeing this mm -hmm. well how do I know I'm almost there several road now and I'm not telling you oh don't you know don't try to write to me and tell oh you're trying to be you know you're trying to go by your senses I'm telling you that the senses are just confirming on the road to where I'm going it's an encouragement do you understand now Moses he wasn't dealing with a different God was he he's still dealing with the living God Exodus chapter 34 let's look at verse 29 and it came to pass when Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tables of testimony in Moses's hand when he came down from the mount that Moses wist not or knew not that the skin of his face shone while he talked with him until Moses had done speaking with them he put a veil on his face because they they were scared to look at him what would why he was glowing he was shining his face his countenance had changed who did it God did it Moses being in the presence of the glory of God we're going from one glory to the next are you here and what happened his face began to shine you can tell his countenance hadn't just changed from a frown to a smile but it continued what's the end that's what I'm trying to get at what is the end of us continuing down this road of being filled by the same God that Moses knew we will be shining our face will continue to lighten until we shine from the goodness of God Moses got acclimated to the glory of the Lord yeah but that was Moses okay we'll try to finish with this go to 2nd Corinthians road markers along the road to being full God's will is fullness his will for you comes out of fullness and the way to be filled is to be being filled over and over again you understand mm -hmm. 2nd Corinthians chapter 3 verse 3 for as much as we are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ ministered by us written not with ink but written with the Spirit of the Living God verse 7 but if the manifest ministration of death 
written in engraved in stone which was glorious was it yeah so glorious that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses for the glory of his countenance which glory was to be done away verse 8 how shall not the ministration of the Spirit be rather glorious the Spirit who the Holy Ghost seeing then that we have such hope we use great great plainness of speech plainness of speech sorry I had a hard time saying that and not as Moses which put a veil over his face that the that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end you see what's going on here there's a veil the veil that Moses put over his face has been taken away nevertheless when it shall turn to the Lord the veil shall be taken away now who are we talking about with the Lord here the Holy, the Holy Ghost remember the Living God the Spirit that gives life he that remains nevertheless when it shall turn to the Holy Ghost the veil shall be taken away who turns to the Holy Ghost you turns to the Holy Ghost without a veil mm -hmm. so what's gonna happen to you you'll be changed mm -hmm verse 17 now the Lord is that spirit and where the Spirit of the Lord is there is freedom or liberty and we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord the Holy Ghost are changed into the same image and when you go and you're full of the Spirit listen when you go and you get full of the Spirit you begin to expose yourself and to see and behold the goodness of God and as you spend time in the goodness of God that goodness gets on you fills you and changes you from one level of glory to the next level of glory until you look just like that good thing that you were beholding so here is where we're supposed to go here is our destination we are not supposed to stop halfway with a half measure and just half full but we're supposed to go all the way on and be filled and be being filled over and over again and until we're changed into his goodness and we're saturated by his goodness and that spills over not only onto us in all our affairs but it begins to spill onto every single person we meet and that is where we're going thank you Holy Ghost I ask you to bless these people and cause them to be continue to be being filled that they may know you as God in the earth today the Living God full of all good things and I pray for them that their finances would be corrected I pray for them that their bodies would be healed and I speak healing in Jesus name sickness stay off of them and I call for the resurrection power of the of the youth renewal of God to come into their physical body so that things become alive and the deadness falls away I thank you Holy Ghost that we can go from this level of glory to the next and I ask you to reveal it to us and we commit to go there in Jesus name Amen Your God.